The 2018 lacrosse season is upon us. We're going to start with the number one team in the country, the Duke Blue Devils. What do you think is the, the biggest question mark for the Devils heading into this season? Without a doubt, who's going to be taking draws at the face-off X? When you look at the rest of their squad, it's a lot of experienced guys. Justin Guterding coming back after a 97-point season. you got two of the most athletic defenders in the country in JT Giles-Harris and Cade Van Raphorst. But bringing that all together, who's taking the face-offs? Moving down to Tobacco Road, the North Carolina Tar Heels enter the 2018 season on the cusp of the top 10. They won a national championship in 2016. They were first round exit in 2017. What are your expectations for them heading into 2018? Well, it's certainly a really young team. I mean, their most veteran player is Chris Cloutier. He's one of the best inside finishers in the entire you know, Division One landscape. But he's complimented by a lot of young guys, especially on the midfield. North Carolina might take a little bit of time you know, to get things going and reveal who their personality is. NCAA runners-up in 2017, the Ohio State Buckeyes come back, led by sophomore attackman Trey LeClaire, and I think Colin Chell, a senior, has emerged as, as something of a leader. Well, Trey LeClaire, it starts with him. He's just one of the most unbelievable athletes. The question about him is, can he carry the offensive load? Syracuse, coming off of a very odd fall, their scrimmages were canceled due to a mumps outbreak. They exhibited a nice 11-4 scrimmage victory over Hofstra, another team in the top 20. You've got to a ton of influx of young talent. I want to see how those guys fit into it. There's just something about playing there that gives Cuse that edge that they need to win games like that. Their names define the sport of lacrosse at the highest level. Four programs annually listed among the elite, linked not only by their past success, but by the expectations placed upon them. So don't for a second doubt yourself, just keep playing. We have a long way to go, but it's paying attention to the details. How great do you want to be? Game time, it's in the back, you better believe it. We all play for one reason, show out dominating this season. It's time, take that dub with us so we leaving. You not with us in the streets and brave heart, turn it up for the season. Game time. It's the season, 2018. With a new year comes the hope and promise of a new season. Never is this more true than at Syracuse, where the expectations are always high. I uh, feel pretty good. We had a nice break, like three weeks off. Um, coming back, seeing all the guys is always good. We have a run test tomorrow, so everybody's obviously all uh, pumped up for that one. But uh, yeah, it feels good to be back. With us being and having a pretty, pretty extensive fall ball season and stuff like that, um, to, to not really having one. We kind of feel like we were a little bit behind, but I think guys are really fresh and ready to go, um, knowing that we got a lot of time that we got to make up. At the annual media day, personalities come to the forefront. Enter number one, Bradley Voigt. Looking fresh for the season. We got our uniforms on for the first time. We're hanging out with the boys before our run test tomorrow, so it's like the last fun day before you know everything gets going. How's it going, uh, Dan? Daily News. Um, <laughs> Thoughts on the Loctus Monster? Is it real or no? There's a lot of controversy not, on that. I'm not too into the Loctus and Monster. The turn and look, the turn and look. Nate, flush your calves. Oh. Watch. He looks so Peter Dirt, right here, big boy. This one, Matt. Jonah, aka the Sloth. Tyson Bomber, this is Bomber. Call him Bomber. Smiley, come here. Look at, look at, look at. Yeah. Yes. It's a joy. <laughs> Why did the farmer win an award? Simply the best in his field. I'm going to show you the green screen now. What are you going to do? I don't know. Tell the camera. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's heat of the moment. I can't do it right now. Like yeah, what do, you, what do you got for us? Just a nice <laughs> smile, cross the arms, just like average everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Very average, you're right. The life of number 45, Brendan Bomberry, has been anything from average, where his first memories are forever linked to the game. I grew up in, uh, on a Native American reserve in Six Nations in uh, Canada. I grew up with a, a big family, um, one of six kids. I think that's kind of made me who I am today, and it's really, you know, I'm really appreciative of that. 
I, I started playing lacrosse when I was two and a half years old. So the earliest thing I remember is wearing a hat under my helmet for some weird reason because everybody else is doing it. I think that's the earliest thing I remember. As he grew, the role of lacrosse in his culture was apparent. We say it's, it's more than a game, it really is. We call it a medicine game. We say that because if I'm playing it and I feel good playing it, nothing else in the world matters. So that, for me, that'd be good medicine. And then we also consider that good medicine for, you know, the people watching who enjoy watching lacrosse and they have that those feelings when they watch the cross and how they love it and they're into the game and we also say it and we're playing for the creator. We always play hard and we play with passion and heart and everything because of the creator. His passion for the game would eventually lead him to a school far from home, but where the game was equally important to his new team. Initially I chose to go to University of Denver. Um, I chose to go there. I was going with my friend Zach Miller. Uh, we were best friends and uh, we decided to go there together. I, mean, I, I fell in love with Denver, I loved it. But that season, the biggest news in Brandon's life came off the field, as his girlfriend discovered she was pregnant with their first child. <sighs> My stomach dropped, honestly, I was so scared. I uh, started crying, I was 18 years old, didn't know what I was gonna do, what was gonna happen. Like, I really did had no clue what, it, what I was gonna do. Even the birth was unexpected. He was born three months premature, but at the same time, I was on a flight to um, North Carolina, so I didn't know anything was happening. So I got off the plane. She had had Jagger three months premature, and I got off the plane, and my phone was blowing up. Like it was at a point where like I couldn't do anything. My phone was just frozen because I had so much text calls and everything, and you know, I still hadn't told my coaches or my teammates or anything. So I go, we play against um, North Carolina. I lo we lose. Um, I go to Coach Tierney's hotel room after the game and I tell him, and after that, I jump on a plane the next day to go to Syracuse to meet my son. It was love at first sight for Brendan and Jagger, as the birth marked a new chapter and direction in their lives. It's amazing, it's so much pride, and I was so happy to see him. You know, just to, uh, to hold him for the first time was amazing, you know, it was awesome. The connection to family prompted Brendan to seek a new school closer to home, and after his sophomore season, he transferred to Syracuse. Double team comes, pass to Barberry! Feeds it in front again, Barberry shoots and he scores, and it's the game winner. Brendan Barberry and Syracuse wins it in overtime, 8-7. to seven. The move also saw him go from midfield to attack, as Barberry started all 16 games for the Orange, notching 28 goals, second highest on the team. Hi. Hi, babe. Do you have a Do you have a good day at school? Yeah. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Nothing. I'm just sitting here. What are you doing? You're eating French fries. Is it good? So Jagger's not gonna sleep tonight. No sleep. Yeah. You wanna come sleep with me? Yeah. I wish you could, babe. In a couple more weeks, okay? Okay? When I picked him up, he said, Dad's at Syracuse with his friends, right? Yeah, he played cross. Jagger is, he's, he's wild. That's a, one word, he's wild, he's unique. He's, he might be the most athletic two-year-old I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, you know, he's always running around, playing lacrosse, just always on the go. He's, he's really smart, he's picked up on a lot of things, and you know, he definitely does things with his lacrosse stick that I've never seen any six-year-old do and he can do it already it's pretty pretty unique experience no way everything i do is for my family and uh, it's, it's really cliche to say but i it's just the way it is it's the way i am it's the way i grew up and it's just it's all about family bye bye daddy bye babe have a, have a good night okay bye 600 miles to the south at Duke, Coach John Donowski and his staff are busy preparing their players for the final test of the preseason. We need to know how to be aggressive and step up. You, you, all of a sudden you're down by three goals well, that's what I'm saying. in the first game, and I have never done this before. I just want to have those fundamental techniques pulled in their arsenal. Weather, 64 degrees, 3 p.m., awesome. All right, that's it then. Ready, Ready. Ready. break. This has been a great scrimmage for us um, over the last uh, several years. Ohio State comes in here and 
kind of kicks our butt. It's a measuring stick. You know, where are we after two and a half weeks of practice? You just want to see your, your team get better. Hurry up, Quench, you gotta get to this code. Stay close oh. to the code. There you go. Move to the ball. Good. Do it faster. Pick up the pace, man. Done. Let's go. Let's go, Gio. Let's go, Wall Jake. You forgot. You forgot this. You got it. Yeah, score a goal for this. We're putting the dirt, Skaggs. That's it, Danny. Done. Let's go. That's yesterday was that first day of game week, right? Where we in the weight room, film, practice, so on. Today now, getting after it, getting back to basics also. All right. Tomorrow will be similar. Thursday will be similar. But we got to get going now. We got to get going in terms of conditioning. We got to get going and playing for two hours. All right. Good job today, babe. For senior Justin Gutterding, the end of practice does not mean the work is over. It's a habit that has made him the Blue Devils' leading scorer the past three seasons, including an ACC high 97 points in 2017. I mean, I, I do the extra work to uh, be the best and the best that I can. Uh, I also want to encourage our teammates uh, to know, you know, do do everything you can to uh, to make this worth while you're here. And it goes so fast. There's just there's just so much to look around, and like even just this view right now is just like it's amazing to take in. Yet for the six foot, 185 pound senior, the personal accolades pale in comparison to his team goals. All I care about is winning, and guys know that. Everything that I've done is a credit to my teammates as well. And past teammates, when I was a freshman, those, those leaders, those seniors brought me along and allowed me to play well and score 50-something goals my freshman year. And now it's my time to really step up and be that leader and bring those freshmen along, like Joe Robertson and Nakai Montgomery, and show them that they can really play well at this next level. Um, and that's really important to me, is to, to be that model for them and, um, and, and just bring them that confidence that they can they can do anything out here on this field and, and play with some of the best in the country. The night before their scrimmage with Ohio State, Coach Zanowski gathers the Blue Devils to cover their final mental checklist. No consequence because it's not, you know? But you got to take a chance a little bit. Be aggressive, all right? You'll gain confidence. Listen, Coach Capito's going to yell and scream at you all season, all right? I guarantee that. I was in, I was in a good place. I took a chance. Bang. <coughs> I missed it. I learned. I won't do it again. And here's the deal. We said today, just show up tomorrow and play. Show up and play. There's a message here of what, why it is now that we're practicing. In the fall doesn't really make a lot of sense. And when, oh man, the spring is so far away, it's a year. Well, one of our traditions, uh, the night before a scrimmage, the night before a game, we have a team meeting, and then we have peanut butter and jelly, cookies and milk, and it's really putting the guys to bed. So everybody's together, uh, we get to hang out a little bit, and then uh, everybody uh, you know, leaves from here, and uh, hopefully in the, in the right frame of mind for tomorrow. Across town, Coach Nick Myers is making similar preparations for his Ohio State Buckeyes. You say, Bob, right? You guys all done? If you want to go ahead and just, just push in your chair, grab your playbook, we're just going to try to assemble in the front here, um, make it a bit easier to go over some of our keys. So thanks. They'll put their chairs back, I promise. Kind of the goal here today is just this a little, little different than what we're going to be doing as we get in next week when we prepare for opponent. But part of our evaluation as a staff and for you guys is to see kind of how our week certainly kind of unfolds today, but also your ability to take information and put it to the field. Don't, don't wing it. Don't just be excited and, and just see what happens. You know, think about 
for you what's going to be important to be successful. If a warm-up doesn't go well or you, you know, you, you're having a hard time in the step-down shooting, whatever it may be, like envision that situation too. So it's not all positive and then something happens you don't like, you don't, you don't know how to respond. We got to make sure we do. We know our principles of Buckeye 7 defense. Play them. Right, guys, we got a 10 a.m. start. It's a little bit different than what we've, we're used to. When we get out back to your rooms, you're going to want to pack everything up. The bus leaves at 8.45. Okay? Outstanding. Let's have a great day together, man. <coughs> Let's make sure we put our chairs back, please. Thank you. Mm -mm -mm. Excited. It is the first time the nation's top-ranked team will face another colored jersey, making the air thick with anticipation. Once the whistle blows, then it's as close to game day until one week from today. but it is the Buckeyes who get out to a quick start. That's more gear. Controlling both the face-off X and the early momentum. Yeah. Yeah. An onslaught of Ohio State goals gave them a commanding early lead and sent the Blue Devils looking for answers. Right now it's eight to two. It's gonna probably end up about 22, 24 to four. All right, if you continue. Bad fundamentals, all right? Bad lacrosse IQ, all right? Uh, and now they're hooting and hollering. All their people are chirping over there. It's awesome. What do you got? How tough are you? Are you gonna fold right now or are you gonna play? The much needed Blue Devil response would come from a familiar place, the stick of number 14 reliable Justin Gutter. Yeah! But Ohio State superstar, Trey LeClaire, was quick to match. For sophomore defenseman JT Giles Harris, playing at Duke is a family affair. While he represents on the lacrosse field, his brother Joe has earned equal respect on the football field. Uh, it's fun. I mean, you get the opportunity to see him play and do something he's very good at and uh, watch him and his teammates compete. I mean, it's a good time. I enjoy it, you know, get it, give him some pointers, make fun of him, stuff that happens, so it's a good time. It is a brotherly bond that has pushed each to be better, although who is the more accomplished player is a subject of an ongoing debate. You know, I'm a better athlete than him, so I'll let him know that once in a while. Despite the level of intensity on both sides, the day was ultimately more about collective improvement than the scoreboard, a fact that is not lost on the Duke coaching staff. That's the idea of scrimmages. They don't count, all right? So that's a good thing. For Coach Myers and the Buckeyes, their final tune-up for the spring served its purpose well. I was really happy with the way the, uh, the, the veterans on our team responded to the challenge today. And to see some young guys scoring their first goals, several freshmen score goals. I think our, our man up, man down session, our first three goals were freshmen. It was great. You know, it's always uh, good to get out to another, you know, another colored jersey. Um, you know, obviously Duke's number one pre-ranked right now, so it was, it was nice to get against them. Uh, we're just excited to get, uh, you know, the season started and, uh, you know, what a better, you know, uh, opponent than, than Duke. For us, I mean, we just like to get after each other every day and, um, you know, we're competing every day and, you know, it's whether it's in the weight room or when we're playing box lacrosse, just getting after it in the dojo or um, on the practice field every day, we like to really just kind of scrap and claw and, you know, make each other better. You know, I like to say an iron sharpens iron and that's kind of something that, you know, we work for. The season is on the horizon.